Hello and good evening, everybody, and welcome to our tasting of the glass shoe whiskies. We've got eight cracking grams to be had this evening. Uh, for, we're not doing a break this time. We decided just to um, go through it. So if you have got cheese and biscuits ready, uh, if they're close by, just feel free to have them when you want, and we'll uh, just continue the, the, the tasting in one go. Um, we are so pleased that the refurbishment has eventually finished. It's taken five weeks. And boy, what five weeks that was. Talk about grafting and doing 12-hour shifts. And the staff and ourselves didn't realise that we could turn our hand to doing painting and joinery and building shelves, dismantling shelves and helping out. And, oh, it's just been great. Everybody, all the staff have just mucked in. It's been absolutely fantastic. And we are all so proud of the shop. It's great. It's a totally different shop. If you haven't been in, you wouldn't recognise it as the TB Watson's as it was. And that was the purpose of doing it. Many companies nowadays are going out of business or closing down, or cutting out staff hours and closing shop hours and working less. We've actually done the opposite. We have reinvested into our business, family business, and into Dumfries, and ensuring that hopefully the staff um, can secure their jobs and everybody will come and um, support us. We believe in Dumfries and Gallery, we believe in Dumfries, and the local people, and the community, everything. It's, it's all about the local community. Um, so I hope you'll come and pop in and say hello, um, and see the shop, give us your opinions. Um, but we are so pleased, and many thanks to the local tradespeople who have um, been absolutely brilliant. We phone them up to come in to do the job. Um, next tasting that we're doing, just in case you don't uh, remember, is Claxton's in June. And then the next one after that is the local one, Annandale, the end of August. And in between times, we'll try and maybe do a visit to um, Bladnock or Annandale. Um, or uh, some other things as well. Maybe mix some whiskey with food pairings or whiskey with chocolate. So there's a lot of things in the pipeline, but because we've been closed for five weeks, we can concentrate on getting the shop up and running. So um, it's a bit of a catch up for us. So for um, the first time online, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing the Glass Shoe Whiskies, uh, a great selection of eight whiskies. And we have um, Paul Jameson as our guest speaker. So good evening, Paul. Hello. Thank you Hello. very much for having me. Sorry, I'm putting a bottle back. Ah, you're in between. The picture shows a TB Watson's Limited barrel with dram busters underneath. You're right in the middle. So there you go. That's absolutely perfect. Nice one. So, nice one. Yeah, thank you. Looking um, forward. So how's the weather with you? There you Abs are. Absolutely stunning. Um, yep. Yeah, it's amazing. I was saying to you before, I've been driving about Scotland all week, so um, it's nice that the week's ended with a nice sunny Friday night. So It does. Ah, it's glorious. Ah, absolutely glorious. Um, so, um, within, without any further ado, we will just uh, pass it on to you to go for the, the first whiskey, and then we'll just take it from there. But as I did say, we're not going to stop for a break. We're just going to go um, straight on. So if you have got your cheese and biscuits or whatever handy, just put them close by and um, we'll continue uh, the tasting. Any questions, um, do as we normally do. Put them up. Karen will uh, put them up and um, Paul will, I'm sure, with confidence, be able to answer the questions. Absolutely. Well, uh, we'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Purple. So, <Welcome. laughs> So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Paul Jameson from uh, Glass You Order. Uh, I hope you enjoy your evening, Paul, online for your first tasting. Um, over to you. Yeah, Brian, thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Okay, so hello, everybody. My name's Paul. Uh, I'm from Glass you Spirits Co. So, I think you'll have all poured a dram. So, pour the first dram, get it in your glass, start sniffing, and I'll talk you through a little bit of a history of us and what we're kind of doing so paul and julian uh, my business partner julian we both run glassy spirits co we're not part of a bigger company it's just the two of us um we met in university 
and there was a fair bit of drinking in uni and we both uh, were doing the same course we're doing aircraft engineering and um the bottle's up nice um we're doing aircraft engineering and we were drinking uh rubbish whiskies basically um uh but we ended up getting a job in the same place after uni but our uh, as our income started to increase the quality of our drams started to increase so we were always kind of uh drinking whiskies and basically just really interested in it um then covid hit and we both got made redundant so um we basically decided to turn to drink um in the form of starting an independent bottlers um, so we started officially in um, 2020. We started more of an Instagram page. The Instagram page was called Damn Good Drams. Um, got the hoodie for it. Um, and then slowly but surely, we got all the right licenses. And about a year and a half ago, we released Glass Your Spirits Co. Um, and from there, we've just been bottling as much as we can. Um, not, you know, we're, we're pretty picky about what we bottle. Uh, but... Um, yeah, and basically just trying to get good liquid into bottles. So first dram, um, you'll see a lot of kind of cask finishes tonight. Um, we really like to focus on uh, the finishes and trying to get like maybe sweet wines, wines, um, just red wine. Uh, there's a lot of port as well. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. So first whiskey is an Altmore nine-year-old. The bottle's there. I think you can see everybody, but that's it. There too. Um, Altmore nine year old finished for 13 months in three Madeira octaves. So, octaves are obviously you get different sizes of casks. Um, generally, most common is barrels, which is about 125 litres of alcohol, and hogsheads, which is maybe about 225 litres of alcohol. Octaves are really small, so they're generally about 80 litres of alcohol. They're small, you can pick them up, they're kind of like a big dug. Um, and yeah, this was in three Madeira octaves. So 13 months in an octave is actually quite long for a whiskey to finish in it. So it's got a lot of those sweet Madeira flavors. Um, so I'll let, you, I'll let you have a wee nose first if you want. Um, but for me, when, when we first tasted it, um, I put all the taste notes in the neck of the bottle. Um, we got, it was Pastel de Nata. I don't know if anybody's ever had it before, but... Um, I hadn't. Uh, I have now, but it's the famous Portuguese kind of custard tart. There's a lot of sweet kind of custard and marzipan notes. Yeah, uh, some yeah, some buttery. Yes, that's what we got. It was it was really buttery and a bit of stone fruits, apricots, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the Madeira has worked really well. Usually, you wouldn't finish a whiskey um, in Madeira cask or in octaves for that long. Generally, it's about eight months, so 13 months is kind of pushing it. Could have ruined the, the whiskey, but um, we didn't. We didn't. We're really happy with this one. So finished it, fifth, or bottled at 50% in natural colour. If you get a full bottle of this, it's almost orange. It kind of looks like iron brew. It's really weird. Um, but, yeah, we absolutely love it. Super sweet. So I'll let you have a wee nose if you haven't already, and a wee try. Um, but, yeah, we absolutely love it. Um, yeah, the, there was a lot of milk chocolate on it as well. We got um, super sweet. We we actually went to the Netherlands um, last year, and there was a gent there that was standing around our stand for maybe about two hours just drinking this. And uh, he said, "Oh yeah, she's she's very good. Yeah, she's uh, my my Dutch is amazing. Hope I'm not offending anybody." Um, but uh, he said, oh, yes, yeah, very nice. You could pour it on ice cream. And I said, I'm not going to pour this on ice cream. So went back, poured it on ice cream, and it works great with vanilla ice cream as well. So um, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, but, yeah, what do you guys think? Brian, you had a wee taste of it. What do you think? Yeah, lovely. We're just um, um, saying there's a sweetness to it. Yeah, it's, it's super. Oh, cheers. Uh, <laughs> speech, speech. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're just um, asking how you, um, how do you source casks? Who do you, who do you buy your casks from? Um, a few. Or do you buy, obviously you, you buy your, um, the spirits uh, in the cask, but 
when you put them into all tapes and other empty casks, where do you, where do you get them from? And or when you finish your whiskey? So we actually bought when we're looking for casks. One thing that we do is we either try and look for something that's already being finished. So this one we bought the three octaves. Um, by themselves so they were already being finished and then we bottled them um if not then we'll buy a whiskey and then we generally try and look for something kind of interesting um there's a famous i'm probably sure probably some of you've heard of them but it's Speyside cooperage is a yeah. um is one that we use but they've kind of got just kind of your classic bourbon sherries you know yeah. in mind least- stuff like that so if we want something different, we have to go on the hunt and we've got some protected sources, I would say, for that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. So generally we look to kind of buy buy already finished, but if not, then we'll find something. So Yeah, I was up in Space like two or three weeks ago and we uh, tried to um, just walk into the Space Side Cooperage and oh, hello, can I have a uh, tickets for two, please? And she went, have you booked? <laughs> no, she went. <laughs> <laughs> no. I said, well, can not squeeze us in? <laughs> no. She's got to book online. She says, you've got to book two or three. Uh, she's updated maybe two or three months in advance coming to the summer. Jeez. But uh, we were, we were <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Because um, um, we were just doing a, a, a tour of one of my customers. We are just doing a tour of space site for a couple of days. And we just went ad hoc. Oh, no bother. We'll just go. We'll go in the afternoon. There'll be no problem. We were staying at the Marsh Tun in Abel Hour, so it wasn't that far away. Great. I we'll spent an hour or so. No, that was that hit in the head. But I had been two or three times before. I've still never. Have, have you ever been to the Cooperage? No, no. I've, I've never got the oh, chance to come up. You um, want to see these guys work. They, they work on sort of peacetime, as in. The more barrels they make, the more kind of, they get paid. Yeah. And these guys do not stop. Yeah, I've and heard that. Any, and you see the hammer that they're using. I would never, ever want to arm wrestle no. any of these guys. Nah. That's great. And the thing is, when they fill their casks up to check if they're leaking, they, they fill them up with water. And yeah. If they leak, they've got to take them back and says, start again. Yeah. So that's knocked them back even more. So they've got to make sure that everything's um, right. That's a yeah. great it's a great place to go to see the marks of work and how they understand how a, a barrel's made and, and refired, recharged, toasted, yeah. etc. It's, a, it's oh, a great yeah. place. I mean, speaking of leaking, that's maybe a little teaser for later. The final right. the final drama of tonight has a story about leakage. Or maybe All not. Right. Or maybe not. I'll leave that on a cliffhanger. I thought maybe I, maybe no. So, <laughs> yeah. What uh, does everybody think of the first one then? Are there any comments came up on that? Silky smooth, yep. Touch um, them up. Funny, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. um, it's a great start. Um, you know where Altmore Distillery is? Space side, isn't it? So yep. yeah, yeah, all, all the way up in Space side. Um, Altmore, the spirit of, I really like Altmore spirit because uh, sometimes, you know, there's a few distilleries that kind of get maybe overlooked in some ways, but I think they create a really, really reliable, fruity, light spirit, and I really like it. And I think the cask finish in this hasn't been too much. We're a bit hesitant on it, but I think the cask have just kind of made it a wee bit more robust. Um, yeah, and he said he gets marmalade in the nose, yeah. Yeah. Super nice and, yeah. But yeah, because when you see um Altmore on the shelf, you don't see really 12 or 15 variations of Altmore. It's not one of these ones that you know, it, it's huge in a selection from independent bottlers or um bottling it themselves. Yeah. Um so the the labels, I mean it's great. I was just saying to Karen, it was great when we were when I was pouring the eight whiskies, to see the eight labels side by side, yeah, and you can you can see the story of and what they're doing, and um, because the way that we do our shelves, it's all alphabetical, mm-hmm. so it's not in regions or in uh, like 
company's products. It'd be great to have all your, I think we do about 12 of your products, or 11. It'd be great to have them all side by side. Yeah. But then if somebody says, oh, um, can I, where's your Tullabardine? Well, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. Yeah, so yeah. if they're all alphabetical, it's great to say, well, here's our seven or eight Tullabardines or here's our four Altmores all together yeah. by either independent bottlers or distillery bottlers. Yeah. But to see the, I should have taken a photograph of the, uh, the eight of them them together because they're just so different and so classy. Um, who came up with that idea? Yeah, so um, we, like I said, Julie and I were aircraft engineers. So when you're, yeah, when we're first starting, it's super hard to get a space in the shelf. I mean, as you know, you have mm-hmm. folks bringing you all the time trying to sell these stuff. And for us being new, um, you need to kind of stand out. So because we were engineers, we tried to mesh the world of Scottish engineering and whiskey together. So for everybody that's kind of listening and tuning in, all of the labels are different, but all of them have like a, a meaning. All of them have a vehicle that was actually used in Scotland or has something to do with Scotland and it works in with the whiskey. So this one, for example, um, this plane is a real plane. It used to fly out of the Clyde. It's called the Cloud of Iona and it used to fly from the Clyde to Belfast. Um, and used to be able to, in the kind of 1930s, but used to be able to get a ticket, a return ticket for three pence. Um, unfortunately, it crashed and killed everybody on board. Yeah. However, it's a cool, it's a cool story, and it actually, it actually existed. So what this, what this plane is doing, it's basically docked up on the sunny beaches of Madeira, collecting the Madeira casks for the whiskey. Oh, However, right. what we didn't realize, Julian and I have never been to Madeira. I didn't realize that. Madeira basically has no beaches. It's all volcanic and cliffs. So putting a beach on Madeira seems a bit stupid in hindsight, but still adds to the story. So, um, so yeah, that's that's one story. Get seven more labels to go as well. So, all right, okay. Karen's just going to take us off screen for a second. Just bear with us. There's a reason. Yep. Well, that was seven of them, because we obviously nice. didn't have the Tom and Tool. Nice. Uh, six. Well, no, it was one of the back. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we do have the we do have all eight in the window, um, at the moment, saying upcoming tasting. But I mean, it's just it's so good. So it's quite good if you could tell the story. Obviously, behind each whiskey, there's a label. You can so you can tell the story of the whiskey and then tell the story of the label. Well, that was that's a great start, Paul. Absolutely great stuff today. Definitely. For the evening. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah, a nice sweet opener. An easy, an easy kind Ooh. of drink. Yep. I hope it's brought some justice to Altmore as well. But yeah, yeah. I really don't we I kept a case of this just for us to kind of drink and dip in and out of. And it's always something that I give to people that generally aren't maybe the biggest of whiskey drinkers yet. I was, I was going to say, it's almost like if somebody wanted to start drinking um, malt whiskey. I mean, I, I know people have said, oh, I don't like malt whiskey because the first whiskey I ever tried was a lager bull and a la Freud <laughs> and it took me right off. Well, so it should do. Yeah. If yeah. you haven't had a whiskey before and worked your palate yeah. up to that scale. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the almost it's as a beginner's malt. Yeah. I mean, just something that's non offensive. It just ticks the boxes. It's easy drinking. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. It's, uh, and the 50% as well. So we bottle, we bottle yeah. everything at 50%. Um, we do that because, firstly, I thought when we were first starting it, not everybody wants to drink a big kind of 63% whiskey. Some people do. I, yeah. I'm partial to it, but. Not everybody wants to drink a 46% whiskey. They want a little bit of a kick. So everything for us is 50%, and we kind of think it's a good mix. We'd love to be able to bottle 62% and stuff, but um, we also get more of a yield, so we can sell more bottles if we water it down to 50%, yeah. which is important. So, but yeah. yeah we just um, we bottled a, 
our 115th anniversary bottling. It was with Annandale, and mm. um, they took 115 bottles out one of the casks that we had. Nice. To celebrate 115. Quite unusual, I'm sure you would agree. Yeah. And ask a distillery to take 115 bottles out of a cask and then roll it back into bond. Yeah. But they did. And um, after, I think it's almost eight years old, so we're legally seven. After seven years, 63.1. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, the guys, when I picked the whiskey up, the guys went, we have to re-gauge that price because, wait a minute, that shouldn't be. So obviously they filled it at yeah. a higher strength. And just as you said, um, they have a whiskey at that, I think an old, an old proof, about 110, 112 proof. Wow. That's, for seven years old, that's yeah. high. Yeah, it's a bourbon barrel. But anyway, um, it does need water. Yeah, yeah. It, must does, need, uh, it does need water. So 50%, I think, is a great balance between 46 unchill filtered and your cask strength. So at 50%, you're, you're in the middle of trying to keep everybody happy between drinking it neat, Yes. Adding a bit of water. Or putting out an ice cream. <laughs> well, do you know what? You've started a craze now. <laughs> yeah, if you want. Remember when this when it when this hits America, it started in them please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Well, Whippy, like you've never known. <laughs> I was perplexed, but I was even more surprised that it actually worked. I was like, Yeah, oh, you'll see all the adults going out to a, a, a nice cream bar at night going, Oh, could I have one of them, please? Yeah, maybe there's a boozy whiskey shop niche for yeah. folks. So, yeah. Right, we'll move on to number two. Nice. Okay, so number two. Um, this one different from the first so first one obviously really sweet uh madeira octaves you got those really nice milk chocolate apricot all those flavors um this one's slightly different so this was our second release from uh glassy spirits co this is a tully barden seven-year-old fully matured and santa million red wine um so this one um i'm sure you're all knows it just now maybe i would had a wee taste um, much drier. You're probably getting a. I get a lot of cranberries and um, kind of more dried fruits off of it. Very tanniny with the wine, but I absolutely love red wine and love red wine finishes on whiskies. So when we saw this, um, we were really interested, and it piqued our interest, kind of fit into the bill for us. So again, it's bottled at fifty percent. Um, fully maturing something or a whiskey and wine can be a little bit tricky. Um, because red wine kind of impacts the whiskey a bit more with the tannins and some people don't like it. You can kind of overdo it sometimes. Um, but we bought this cask, we tried it and we thought, yeah, that's fine. Let's just bottle it just now. Um, so it's first fill red wine, um, which makes it a wee bit more punchy. Um, but on the nose, I got on the label here, we had a lot of, it was candied apple, um, plum jam and there was a little bit of ginger to it so kind of ginger bread um and we kind of like to throw a a wild card tasting note into uh some of our um bottlings so the wild card for this one was strawberry ice cream um you might get it you might not get it um i i got it the first kind of time that i smelled and tried it um but there's kind of like a sweetness aftertaste to it as well but super high quality red wine barrel and um very different from the first so yeah bottled at 50 percent again um the story in this one for the label um I'll, hold on i'm gonna have a wee sip first sorry mm. yeah i've not had that in a while um the story in this one for the label so the plane on it is a uh, vickers viscount and that used to fly out of Presswick um, to Glasgow and Presswick to London and kind of further beyond. Um, and because it's a red wine matured cask, we've got it flying over a vineyard in France, so a Bordeaux vineyard. Um, and yeah, it's quite nice to tie in. When we've been in festivals, there's been a couple of people that have um, kind of recognised the plane and uh, maybe saw them when they were younger or that so it's quite cool it's quite cool um yeah we really like that one another wee easter egg in this one 
is when we first started, we obviously didn't have a lot of money to um, get, you know, buy full loads of cash. So an investor helped us with this one, and their initials are on the tail plane of uh, of. The oh, plane. very good. <laughs> Homage to yeah. the investor. Yes. So yeah, what do you think of that one? Yeah, lovely. I mean, you, um, I noticed when I was born them, you could see that tinge of the red, the red cast. Do you know, um, do you know what particular chateau it came from, or did he just buy the cast from a, a bro uh, the broker? Like, it came from the Cav Dur Durth. My French is awful. The cat, the Cav Dur Durth. It was the wine. Right. Yeah, uh, but it was Santa Million, uh, yeah. kind of uh, region, I think. So, but the the winery was the cab tooth, yeah. yeah. Oh, Robert said sharp raspberries, nutty taste, but sweet, more candy fruit with a butter dry finish. Yeah, yeah, it's it is very different. It's a lot of more fruity this one, I think. Yeah, yeah. it definitely is. Yeah, you get well, the, the, the Santa Millions. The, the region of Santa Melian predominantly is a Merlot grape that we use. And Merlots are more softer, fruitier style of, of wine. Mm -hmm. So if you have a glass of Merlot compared to a like, glass of Shiraz, it's like chalk and cheese. The Merlot is soft and plummy and easy drinking. Shiraz is a bit more bolder and up front and a bit yeah. more tan into it. And so if you have a Santa Melian and cask and, uh, finish, on the maturation and um, it does give that hints of fruit to it because of the softness of the the, the grape that's in it so i again it's a cracking cracking i, I mean I, I i don't think it needs to be honest i don't think it needs water in this one i don't yeah. know if anybody's put water in the first one or not i did um after i tried it but i'm, I'm not going to put water in this one because i don't think it needs it even at 50. i i just think it's Easy yeah, there was um when we when we go to the kind of festivals um and you know people tried it from we we're letting people try that one it's a, obviously very open to this it's kind of a hit or miss for some people um firstly it was because Tully Barden I don't think a lot of people enjoyed Tully Barden spirit and the red wine but we converted a lot of people as well because it's a single cask bottling and it's from us. I think sometimes the distillery releases don't necessarily do the spirit justice. So when people try a single cask from somewhere like Tully Barn and Red Wine, it can kind of change their minds. So, um, yeah, I, I, I really like it. I love Red Wine casks. Um, we've got a couple to try tonight. So, yeah, yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we really like them. It does um, add, add a little extra dimension to it. Yeah, being, being finished or matured in a, a red wine cask. Yeah, there's a, the color. It's a flavor, obviously. Yeah, and the fla the, the color of that one for, again, it's it's red. It's like yes, a, aye, it's a t aye, doesn't it just? Yeah, it's a really red, deep red dram. So, yeah, for all the for all the wine heads out there, it's good. That's also one thing that I, I need to brush up on is I focus so much on whiskey. I need to start learning more about wine. So when you're talking about the Shiraz and stuff, I yeah. I don't know that. So that's that's something that I need to need to remember. Yeah. Say great drums. Thank you, Sarah. Caramelized butter and fruit. Ah. I see, yeah, we've got a couple more comments now. <laughs> yeah. Everything the nose dry finish. Oh, well, um, thanks for the taste, Millie. Thanks for coming. Cheers. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, really. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, it's great that uh, people say what they think. If they say it's a gra cracking drum for them, they will, but yeah, it's not, it's not. That's good. I, mean, I, I particularly like that one. Um, that's good. I mean, it, one thing I've got, I've got a sort of Swedish tooth. Um, but yeah, that, that's great. But as I say, as far as I'm concerned, I, what's everybody else's opinion? If you don't mind me asking about. Having it with water, has anybody drunk it neat? Has anybody added water? Is there any difference in the, the taste with um, this one? Water, yeah, I think. With, or, with or without? That could be a song. With or without? <laughs> anyway. 
So Khan liked it better with water. With okay. water. Or with water. I'd, re I'd recommend water with this one, maybe. When, we, when we've been trying it with people at festivals and stuff, yeah. um, a lot of people have been, ha like, they like it with water. They like the Tilly Barton. It opened up a wee bit. Mm -hmm. um, because it is maybe quite sharp. I know that the Altmore was nine year old. You could drink that at 50% to me without water, but some people kind of like what it's just depends on people's palates and tastes, isn't it? Yep. Need water first. So. Yep. Great. Yeah. Okay, we're going to number number three. Absolutely. Yep. So, this one's a Tom and Tool. Pour myself a wee jam on this one. Let's go. Third jam of the night. We've got Tom and Tool seven year old. Tom and Tool, seven-year-old, finished for two years in Marsala. Um, so this one here, we got, we've got we got two drums tonight that we really had to push um, to get ready for this evening. So you guys are some of the first of our customers and um, and kind of people to try this Tom and Tool. So um, we started to try and get this bottled in February and it only got bottled and picked up on Monday, this Monday, so Monday this week. So this is literally uh, hot off the press. press. Um, so yeah, Tom and Till, I think Tom and Till is really good spirit, the gentle dram. Um, and uh, yeah, we've we finished this for two years in a first fill Marsala Barrique. So you've got that gentle, really nice light spirit with uh, something like a really nice sweet marsala um, and the barrique it's a smaller cast so it kind of takes on more of the flavor um, so again bottled at 50 percent um, and yeah 280 bottles we got out of this so um, kind of a medium run for us um, you generally get about maybe 300 bottles so it's maybe a bit on the low side but yeah we got a lot of it was fresh peaches on this um, and a lot of honey um, one for me, I got some candied ginger on it. It's got a little bit of spice from that Marsala barrique, um, but the sweetness kind of the uh, the candied sweetness to it as well for me. Um, and then I get sweet amaretto on it too. Um, so I tried this at cast strength and then watered it down. Um, and to me, a little bit of water kind of opens it up. Uh, but that's just kind of my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'm re I'm really really happy with this one. Um, I wanted to bottle a Tom and Tool for a while. Um, I really like Tom and Tool, so when we saw this, we jumped on it. Um, the uh, artwork for this one. So you'll notice that this is a balloon. Um, not a lot of people know that the second person to ever fly in the world um, was in a balloon, and he was a Scotsman. Um, that's not actually him. That's the third person who perfected it. It was a guy called Vincenzo Lardini, I believe. He was an Italian that um, flew over Glasgow and Edinburgh. So that's him and his balloon flying over Glasgow around 1785. So um, that's the other story that links into that. Um, but yeah, yeah. What do you think? What do you what do you think? What do you think, Brian? That's really smooth. I mean, that's smoother than the number two. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 I'm a bit of a common tool fan, to be honest. I mean, I do like their, their spirit, regardless of um, what it is. But um, that, that is definitely, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't need water on that one. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's a... It's easy. It, it lives up to the name. Coconut. That's an interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I. No, it's a hobnobs. Yeah. Marzipan. Yeah. Marzipan coming through. Yeah, Simon said marzipan as well. Mm.
cake mix shortbread. Yeah, well, I'm glad the reception for that. That's that's good so far. Parma violets in the nose. Oops. Finish. Nice. It's always a bit nerve wracking releasing a new dram. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> it's like well, like everything else, you've um, you've selected it, you've put your label on it, and then everybody else has, has to judge it. Yep. It's like, like everything. Yeah, I suppose it, it's winemakers. They make the wine and they spend years with the vines and they pick the vines that have been in the ground for a hundred years and they make a, a wine that they're so proud of. They put it in the bottle at 30, 40, 50 pound a bottle and people go, oh, that's lovely. That's so delicious. And other people say, that's pretty crap. That's, <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's rubbish. Um, it's up to the individuals of um, what they do and what they think and what other people um, think of it. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That's a, that's a lovely one. You're kind of at the mercy of uh, people's um, perceptions because one of the one of the things that we try and do is we have to. It's a it's a real chore, but we try and drink as much whiskeys as possible. Um, market research, if you will. So we we always get loads of different types of drams, and and it's always kind of like what we're gonna do next. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I say, when we saw the Tom and Tool, you also don't see a lot of independently bottled Tom and Tool. And when you do, it'll probably just be in a bourbon barrel um, or maybe sherry. But we decided to go for um, for the Marsala, and I think it's worked out quite well. We're quite happy with it. Um, and, and yeah, like I say, I'm really glad that that's got some positive reviews. So, do you hold many casks in bond? Um. Yeah, we've got what have we got? We've got loads. Um, we maybe got about ten lined up. All right, okay. For release coming out, yeah. Or coming for next releases. Yeah, for next releases. So part of our oh. game, part of our game plan, um, a little bit of an insight into how we kind of want to run things. Mm -hmm. Some for some bottlers, as you'll know, they kind of do quarterly releases, so they'll maybe yeah. do eight drams a quarter. Um for us you know we don't really have the time just now or the backlog to kind of get that ready so we kind of just want to release stuff when we can um and that that means that we're going to have hopefully a big range um and it means that maybe someone will like a kalila um but they'll not necessarily like our tully barden which is fine yeah. we've released enough that someone else can get something from our range um so that's how we're kind of looking to do it moving forward. Well, I think the fact that you're doing single casks, you've only got, what, 220 to 290, 300, depending on the size of the cask, of course. Um, the bottles to bottles, that's not a lot. for the <laughs> No. Really. So you can you can churn through a few casks um, yeah. of whiskey and, and you and suppose because you've got the choice you've got the flavors it's like being in an ice cream uh, parlor i suppose you've got all the ice flavors of ice cream there yeah you've got all the flavors of your casks sitting yeah. there but you yeah. can say well okay they're not all peaty they're all not sweet and they're not pedro and they're not uh, this they're a combination of everything so you've got all the flavors of whiskey in those casks waiting to be bottled and selected. So you're not just churning out the same style of whiskey. It's all different at different ages as well. And yeah, you fit in your head. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I like the ice cream shop analogy because it hopefully know. means as well as if, like I say, if somebody likes a particular dram or a finish, Maybe even if they're interested, because some of some of the stuff that we've got tonight is still a little bit different, um, and you kind of won't get it everywhere, which is maybe something that we need to look at. Maybe it's not out there because people have done it already and it's rubbish, <laughs> and we're like, oh, there's a market for that, and then we go yeah. do it. But that's not happened yet. So, um, yeah. yeah. I just think your, your whiskey's lined up as an ice cream panel. We've got them all there. 
Yeah. But instead of in scoops, they're in bottles. Yeah, whiskey and ice cream again. There's something. I know. Here they go. I know. <laughs> there's oh, something here. I think we've, I think we've started <laughs> something here. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, then, no, no, that was that was good again. So, um, will we go to number four? Let's do it. Let's do it. Just yeah. tell me if I'm talking too much as well. By the way. No, no, no. We are we're, we're bang on time. Nice. We're absolutely uh, bang on time. Um. Okay. So, dram number four. Um, now this one is, it's called Ardlayer. So this is Ardlayer Spirit from Ardmore Distillery. So this is, Ardlayer is unpeated Ardmore. Okay, so yeah, unpeated Ardmore. So um, I think Ardlayer is a very light, creamy spirit. And um, you don't generally see a lot of Ardlayer out there um, just because they don't produce a lot of it. Um, and when you do, it's usually gone and people have snapped it up. So we managed to get an Ardlayer. And um, what we've done is we've finished it again in a Santa Mille Ombarique from a different winery. I don't necessarily know the winery this time um, for 14 months. Um, now this one, I know it's another red wine cask, but it's super different from the Tilly Barden. Um, you still get those red wine notes and it is still tanniny um, and things like that. But I get a lot more, it was orange zest, um, toasted oak. There's a little bit of uh, hazelnuts to it as well. And then we had cherry bake well on this one. Um, so it's probably a bit more sweet and nutty as opposed to the Tully Barn red wine cast that was maybe a little bit more earthy and and, um, and dry. Okay, so yeah, yeah, this one, this one was really good for us. Um, it's 50% as well, natural color. So um, maybe not quite as deep red as the Tully Barn because it's not fully matured. It's only finished for 14 months, but we tried it at 14 months and we thought it's probably enough for that. So we took it out and um, you can still taste the Ardler spirit. So it's nice and creamy and light. Um, and I really think that the cask and the spirit have worked, uh, worked really well with this one. Um, so yeah, Slange, what do you guys think, Brian? It's different from the, the Talabardin. Oh, sorry. Normally we would have, normally we would have said, um, if you anybody had kept any of their whiskies, they could go back to number two and compare it with number four. Yep. That's not going to happen with the drum buster. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from room number six at the minute, I'm sure. But anyway. <laughs> Probably. They're better listening to me. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's different. I just wish I had kept some of number two um, to do a well, I can do because we can do that next Friday, actually. Yeah. When we're doing it at the, the Railway Club, um, we can keep some of the the drums to compare to the, the, the previous ones. So that's, mind me on to do that, not just to drink them. Mind me on to keep definitely. some. Keep yes. Some. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's very different from the Tully, I think. Um, a bit softer, a bit softer as well. I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because of the age um, in it, but it's, it's more sort of mellow. It's a lot oh. lighter dram. The spirit. Um, lighter, yes, yeah. it's, it's lighter. Yeah. Because going back to the Tully as well, I'm just using that as a reference point. I'm yeah. Still talking about the hard layer, but the Tully sometimes the spirit is a little bit sharp um but the ardler the ardler spirit they they only make a little bit of it a year but it's super light and it's super soft yeah um, uh, yeah light and soft you put it on the head there yeah. yeah. easy softer creamy light car oh caramel interesting hmm. yeah um just a a little uh, background on the label for this one so like i was saying the when we first started, we, we were, you know, people were helping us buy casts. So this is another cast that someone's helped us bought and we've brought to bottling. So he's bought a couple of casks with us 
and we've named this series the Havelock series. So this is casks that he's bottling through us. So um, the Havelock series is named that because he lives in Havelock Street in Glasgow, which is in the West End. Um, and this is a famous kind of church and restaurant called Cottier's Restaurant. I don't know if anybody's been to it, but it's set on his street that he lives on. It's set in the 1800s in Glasgow. And that wee light that you can see, you can see it in the picture. Um, mm -hmm. That's oh. his yeah, that, that's his flat. That, um, <laughs> so we've got a, for a shout out to him. Uh -huh. I did check, this breaks no GDPR. So you, I guarantee you, you won't be able to go to Havelock Street in Glasgow and point out where he's flat and where he lives. You won't be able to find out that. Um, but it's still cool, I thought. So it's kind of bringing it back to Glasgow. Not so much engineering, but it's a shout out to the investor that helped us yes. bring that all. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's another... Uh, Another little Easter egg. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, do you enjoy that one? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, William likes. Yeah, William likes this better than Tully. Yeah, cranberries. Yeah, we got. I got a lot of cranberries from it. It's like that sweet dried fruit to it. Not an egg cuddle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the red currants. You can smell it. From my glass, you can see the alcohol is just... It's That's an amazing insane. glass. Yeah, it's... Um, there's a story behind that. I smashed, I smashed one. <laughs> Karen won it in a prize with a, a distillery. I won't name the distillery. It was a... So, a, what, what did you... Treasure hunt sort of thing. And the winner um, got this glass, and Karen won it. And I use it for tastings, and of course I put it in the dishwasher and it smashed. So for oh, my nice. birthday, in, my birthday in the end of February, she went and actually bought me one of these. Oh, nice! On the understanding that um, no, no way did it go in the dishwasher; it had to be <laughs> washed by hand. So as it's a great glass, and, <laughs> I mean it just it's it's made for the no, you can swirl it about quite happily, and then you get the aromas um, coming yeah. from it. It's great, but you have to be very, very careful when you wash it. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Well, I think I lost oh. you there for a wee second, Key. All right. Okay. Are we back on? Oh. I think oh, it's my. Nice. Uh, I think it's my laptop. All right. Well, we can we can hear oh, we can hear and see you. Having some tent. That's you okay. I can hear you now. Are Sorry, you? something happened okay, there. Now. Yeah. That's all right. I, th I think my laptop was running out of power there, and it kind of had a little moment. So we're back. Right. We're fine. So. Um, yeah. So what would you say with this one? With or without water? I see Martin oh, said without. that he enjoyed that. Oh, without water. Uh, without. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Karen? I can't think without as well. Yeah. Well, again, it's softer, it's, easier drinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's fifty percent again, and I think, I think when you taste a dram like that, if you put it fifty percent can sometimes be a good, uh, a good percentage to bottle at. It kind of reaffirms our decisions on it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like it without water now. Anne was saying she was she was getting banoffee pies, so in the nose and taste as well. Ooh. Caramel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Banoffee pie. I need to right. I'm going to remember that one actually. Oh. It's funny though because when people tell me a tasting note, I then taste it. I think that happens to everybody. It's kind of like power of suggestion. So. Well, it is. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> It's when people go, oh, there's a sweetie. It's a. It reminds me of what was that? What was that one? Then you go, I don't know. You're a different generation, and you go, Odd Fellows. And you're like, yeah, Odd Fellows. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get the thumbs up from everybody. Odd Fellows sweets. That's yeah. exactly what it is. 
then everybody starts tasting odd fellow. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We yep. get cola, cola cubes in this one as well, was one for me, but oh, right. Um, yeah, that can sometimes be a bit strawberry, slight touch of wood, the usual spiciness, light dram. Good, I'm good. Hopefully, everybody's enjoying them so far. That's good to hear. Yep, well, I think so. Yep. Mm. Yeah, okay, right. Number five. If you're, if you're okay to do that. Yeah, absolutely. We're good for time. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're spot on, almost to a minute. Yep. So good. Cool. Don't panic too much. Brilliant. So, jam number five. What do we have? We have, I've got them all lined up behind me. So, um, this one for. Me again, it was a really exciting one to do. Um, you don't see a lot of this bottled. Um, it's kind of hard to find cask from it. So when we found it, um, we jumped on it. Uh, so this is a Glen Glasso, single cask Glen Glasso, uh, 12 years old and fully matured for the entirety, 12 years and first fill um, Tawny Port. So, this for me was my Christmas dram. I drank about two or three bottles of this over the Christmas period, not on Christmas Day. Um, but I, I absolutely love this. So you don't really see a lot of Glen Glasso, single cask Glen Glassos. Um, it was obviously owned by Billy Walker at one time. Um, and as far as I can remember, he, he didn't really do a lot with it. Um, but the spirit for me has always been good. And I know that they've just went through a brand, re, a rebrand, and I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing what they do. So just pour myself a drum here, sorry. So this one was quite a big cask as well. We got 324 bottles out of it. It was pretty good barrique after 12 years. It kept it kept a lot of its liquid. It was really, it was really strong, this cask. Um, and fully mature and poor, it's, it's done wonders for me for this. So we got a lot of, it was a, kind of the stewed fruits that you get from um especially like wine casks and sweet wine so port so we get the stewed fruits um mirabelle plum um a lot of dark chocolate and raisins a little bit of orange zest too so um i mean again you kind of get those fruit cake um flavors for that too but yeah i absolutely love this it's um it's right on my street to me um 50% and cast color again. So, um, yeah, the label for this one as well. Um, this was a, a boat. It, if anyone's seen our first release, we had the Anchor Line. So it was the shipping company that used to work from the Clyde in the, I think it was the 1600s, 1700s back in the day. They used to obviously ship all over the world, passengers and freight. Our very first release was a Blair Athol rum cask and it was coming out of the Clyde. Um, this label harks back to that first release. It's the exact same boat going up the Clyde estuary and passing Aaron. So we're kind of harking it back to that as well. So yeah, Slange, hope you all like it. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Yeah, that's totally different. Absolutely. So and a, it's been port matured. Yeah. Not finished. Yeah. So that's and, yeah, the first maturation of the night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we um, always do a raffle at the end of the night because people buy, um, they have the option um, when they buy a kit to buy raffle tickets. Um. Some buy raffle tickets, some don't. Um, tonight, there's been less people buying raffle tickets than normal, which is a bit disappointing. So that means, raffle raffle prize, that means the raffle prizes are less. Yep. But um, the raffle prizes are the first three are the first Blair raffle. Oh, nice. Yeah. Excellent. So the raffle prizes tonight. Now, there is still time, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to buy raffle tickets, you can do them online. 
Um, and we are giving away, um, we've got three bottles at the moment. The last three of the Blair Athol first release. Um, this was just something we wanted to do as a an Athol prize. We wanted to give something that we haven't tasted tonight from yourselves. Yeah. Um, and we thought the Blair Arthur was a, a great prize to give. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. There won't be many of them going up. Well, in fact, I'll be surprised if there's any left in the country of the Blair Arthur, your first one. Yeah, no, there's not. No, there's not. There's not. Yeah. I tried I tried to buy some off of some shops uh, because we ran out. So if I'd known, I would have. Ah, uh, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a need to know. It's a need to know. No. We, but, we did lay some aside for a special occasion. I'm thinking that something might come up, and this is what's came up. So um, Definitely. Yeah. So you can still buy raffle tickets um, uh, for it. Yeah, this is totally different. Port Mature. So. Yep. Port not, mature. not finished. You've got that depth of flavour and the, the colourings. Not really adding too much. There is a difference in the colour um, to it. But yeah, lovely. It's not as dark as you would expect. And, no. Um, yeah, I mean, we've no. we've we've done nothing to this cask. We just found it, um, which is kind of half the battle yep. when you're a bottler. So when we found it and we got it, um, yeah, that was going straight into the bottle. And um, yeah, I think 50% still good. In all honesty, in my heart of hearts, it would have been good to bottle this at cask strength. I just think uh, probably, yeah. something about it, but I still think 50%, you can still get a real kick from the from the alcohol on it, but it's not overpowering. It's it's nice. It's uh someone said it's a real big hitter, and I think I think I'd agree with that. Oh well, you know, it definitely is a very lip smacking. It yes. kills the you can still feel it in the, in the back and the side. You can still you can have a, a set and go. It's still there. Yeah, it's the finish is really long, it's super oily. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Can you sip that one whiskey for about half an hour or so and go? Mm, it's, well, or quicker if it's Christmas time and yeah. Old. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be professional when I say half an hour or so. But <laughs> No, but that, that everybody's be... going, yeah, 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 blah, blah. It's, it's, it's gone, mate. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> but you could, you could just sit there and savor it. Yeah. yeah when, you, when you're watching Master Chef in the evening, yeah, you can I'll... sit there with that quite easily and have one or two, man. One or two, yeah. That I mean, the thing is with that as well is find another. You know, f fully matured Glen Glasso single cask. That's the problem. You know, yeah. And the uh, fact that it's been in a, a port cask as well, you do get more bottles from it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that cask was 324. It was a oh. breed. So, it's this, it's actually the same size as the Tom and Tool that we tried previously. Yeah. So, so, same size, but we about got two, 225 liters, is it? Or 250? Uh, a, a Barique's one four five. A one oh Barique one four five. Yeah, liters of alcohol. Yeah, so aye, aye. you can see, you can maybe see the difference in the challenges for us as an independent bottler. So, uh, the Tom and Tool Barique, the Glen Glasgow Barique, both one hundred forty five liters of alcohol. The Tom and Tool only produced two hundred ninety bottles. Mm -hmm. 324 so the, there's something with the, the size of the cask that this has had more evaporation so we've lost yeah. more bottles over the time and this is younger as well so this was a really good cask the Glen Glasso really strong cask oh it's just it's cracking it's just full of flavor and aroma and flavor to it super oily yeah Aye, yep. I think when we went to the festival, this was, or your festival, this was one of the favourites at the stand. We went through this pretty quick. Mm. I like the fact it's port matured, not port finished. I mean, that's the icing on the cake. 
Yeah, it makes a difference, hundred percent. That's a that's a double corner for the ice cream parlor, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't want ninety nine flake on that. I'll just have a double cone. Double yeah, cone. absolutely. Yeah, uh, there's something there with ice cream. Tell me. <laughs> Oh. So, my mission is to find another Glen Glasso. Well, I think that's my favourite so far. Yeah. I think so. It's good as well, because hopefully I've showed so far that we do have a lot of different casks, and we're trying to oh. do different flavours and, um, you know, kind of stand out a wee bit. So I think that Glen Glasso, single cask Glen Glasso, um, 12 year old. I mean, if you're going to go to the distillery and buy a bottle from that from the distillery, that'd be you know, oof, yeah, a couple hundred quid at least. Probably. Oh, it was going to be high water in compared to what we are, yeah, and like I say, find another, you know, I'll I'll do that though, I'll find another for everybody else and then I'll bottle it and then we can we can all enjoy it. <laughs> Actually. We do have another. It's the last one. We do have another single cask on glass. Yeah. That, that'll be totally different from mm. That will be like chocolate cheese. Mm -hmm. okay. Carol um, has told me that, Alan, your raffle tickets are in the bucket. <laughs> in the draw bucket, not the bucket bucket. <laughs> You haven't, just them, have you? you haven't just taken the money and bend them, have you? No, no, no. Ah, they're folded carefully. She reassures me they're folded carefully, Alan. <laughs> any panic, any panic. Um, that'll pay for the Chinese next day tomorrow, right? Great, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're on to, um, oh, now, this is unusual. This is a rarity. I don't think we've, we've got, I don't think we've got a fun size at all, ever, at a tasting in 30 odd, well, 30 years, 25, 28 years of uh, Dam Busters. Oh, nice. Yes, nice. indeed. Absolutely. That's the first. Cool. Yep, a first. And this is a first. Yep, absolutely. Nice. Um, yeah, so Burnside, maybe. I'll, I'll tell I'll tell everybody what it is. I I'd never really heard of Burnside. I never tried Burnside um, before. So Burnside is if you haven't tried it, it's technically a blended malt. But don't let I know some people don't like blends, but don't let that put you off. This is ninety nine percent Balvenie. With a teaspoon of Glenfiddich. So that means that's why it's classed as a blended malt. But this is essentially a single cask Balvenie under the pseudonym Burnside. Um, so you don't see an awful lot of these casks about. You just, you, did, you don't, I mean, like Brian said, in 25 years of Dram Busters, probably never really seen one. Um, so obviously, when we saw this, we snapped it up. So this one, um, red wine again so this is finished in a first fill amarone barrel for two years um now you, this one uh, i again third red wine um i i love it i think it's great this one's super different from the other red wines we've had before so for us we got it was a lot of black currant jam um marzipan there was a lot of fresh like dark cherries um and we've got a lot of black forest gato, but something that I've kind of um, picked up from tasting it over the last couple of days is it's got a kind of funkiness to it as well. For me, I don't know if anybody can kind of relate, but you get a you, when you drink Springbank, for example, you get the Springbank funk. This kind of has a similar thing. I'm not saying this is Springbank. I don't want it to be. I want it to be Burnside. I'm not trying to, you know, put those two together, but that taste note, that funkiness, I get it from that. And I wasn't sure if it was the spirit or if it was the cask, but I think it's the cask. I think it's the red wine cask that's bringing it. And I really like how it's turned out. So again, this one, you guys are 
some of the first ones to taste it. It was only bottled last Friday and I picked it up from the bottlers on Monday. Um, no, uh, yeah, this one was delivered to Brian on Friday. So um, he's the very first shop to have it. You guys are some of the first to taste it. So um, I hope you like it. Um, and I'll, I'll go into a wee uh, de in depth of kind of, of the of the label after, but what do you guys, what do you guys think of that one? Yeah, we've got some uh, cherry bakewell and marzipan. Nice. Mm. What's your thoughts? It's totally different from the other two red wines. Mm -hmm. um, because we're on to a different wine finish with Amarone being from Italy. Um, yep. Very powerful red wine. Yep. Without a doubt, comparing to your Santa Millions in France, which are predominantly Merlot, you've got Italy with the biggest red wine. There's Barolo and there's Amarone, so you've got the powerful 14 to 17% alcohol red wine casks. Um, and then you put your spirit into it, which will draw from the colour and the alcohol and the flavour. So I prefer this one <laughs> because I love Amaroni. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's not the cheapest of wines, but it's a wine that you treat yourself to every now and again. Yeah. Um, and to have a wine that's finished in Amaroni cast, um, it adds to the cost and to the flavour and everything else. So there are, there's not many Amarone, um, when I think um, Aaron do Amarone cask finishes. Yep. But to have a, a another distillery doing an Amarone um, finished cask, it, it just it's great. Yeah. Absolutely. When it's got a bit more depth of flavour to it, it's, it's nice and long. It's just lovely. Mm. Well, again, glad you glad you like it. It's good. It's good to hear because it's a very it is a very unusual release when you've got the burn side and what that spirit is. Like I said, the Belveni, and then like you say, we have done the Amarone cask, which you don't see a lot of. So no, absolutely it was, not. It was a bit of a gamble. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think been... you gambled well. I think you yeah. you're on a winner. Yeah, so chicken but, dinner. But yeah, we're we're happy with how that came out because I like I, I tried it and it's always nerve wracking. I tried it, and I was like, oh thank God it's good. It's and it's it's really good. So yeah, I, I've got I've got sort of a tingle at the side of my cheeks for the the flavour with it. There's a can you get the funkiness to it? I don't know if it's just there's a, almost a peppery a peppery sort of the, the tingle to it that's going, Oh, give me more. No yeah. really you have something like chili, and you go, I don't really like chili, but there's a yeah, chili, and he went, Oh, but there's something there that I want a bit more of. Yeah. Just try try a little bit more to see if I like that chili flavour. And I'm getting this pepperiness in the in the side of my tongues here that says, Can I have a bit more? Just gonna mm -hmm. try some just to make sure I like it. Mm. It's an odd sensation. Yeah. It's a... Uh... Yeah, I think that's probably one of the favorite, my, my favorite ones that we've released in the past couple of couple of months. Um, should we give him more? <laughs> well, yes, hi, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that that funkiness it was a weird one. It th it threw me off. I think I think it is the the cask, the Amarone cask from that, yeah. the tannins and that. Because you say it's the big hitter, like yeah, red wine. I think it is from that. So, yeah, yeah, I really, I really like that. But the um, our wine cast less expensive than sherry and bourbon from Andy. Uh, depends. So that Amarone cask, no, that one was more expensive. Generally, I mean, I'm really transparent with some of the costs and stuff, like. A sherry cask can range anywhere from, depending on how big it is, from 600 X fat to two grand X fat. It just depends. Um, if you really want something special from a certain type of 
sherry, uh, then you're going to have to pay through the teeth for it. But generally, if you buy sherry from like Speyside Cooperage, you're just buying a sherry cash. You don't know where it comes from. So it, basically the answer to that is it depends. It depends. Yeah, because um, like everything else, um, wine producers, be it, um, if, you were saying, uh, if you go to a red wine producer from Bordeaux, you can have a Bordeaux that you sell for 50 quid a bottle, and that might relate to 300 pounds for the cask. Or you could go to Chateau Newton Rothschild or Chateau Margot at uh, five thousand pound a bottle, yeah, yeah. or a nineteen fifty four or whatever. And you've got that cask, yeah, empty. That's going to cost you a fortune. Yeah, if you want something specific, be ready to pay. I'd say with the the Amarone, it all depends on the producer. Yeah, and some producers I'll let you know. Yes, you could say this was from my vineyard. You can put the name on. And some producers say, yeah, you can have my cask. You can see it's Amarone, but I don't want my name on the bottle. Yeah. It just protects them from yeah. everything else that's going on. Yeah. But to get um, an Amarone cask, um, it's not cheap. Anyway, regardless who the producer is, because Amarone is one of the top um, ranges of wines uh, in Italy. Yeah. So you you're, 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 you're paying decent money um, for it, and that reflects in the price. And it, it transfers over to the quality as well, hopefully. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, it means absolutely. that it's a high-quality finish cast. So, yeah. yeah, I'm happy the way that came out. So I'll give you a bit more tanning to it as well, and a bit more depth of flavour. So yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, oh, before I forget, actually, the label for this one as well, because I need to talk through the labels for a lot of them. Yeah obviously um so glashu spirits co obviously glashu is gaelic for glasgow julian and i stay in the west end of glasgow and we use the subway all the time i love the subway it's great um but it only really works if you live in the center or if you want to go to the west end so restricted yeah. but it's a uh, i believe it's the third oldest subway in the world so us Scots were obviously pioneers of innovation and stuff, and we were one of the first to incorporate a subway. Unfortunately, it's not changed that much since then. However, um, still, like we're one of the first to do it, which is cool. So the label for that one, it is Glasgow Subway uh, around um, the 19 kind of 30s, but it's been operating since 1896. And if you look very, very closely, I don't know if you can get it on the camera, but that little poster there is the artwork from our very, very first release, um, the Blair Athel Jamaican rum cask. So if you enter the raffle, you'll have a chance to win our very first release. And that's the artwork from that. So we've put a little Easter egg and that's the poster um, on the Glasgow subway station. So when you go on the Glasgow subway, you'll see all of the posters and the adverts. And um, that's that. So that's the story behind the behind the release there um oh alan thank you for this to the amaroni the aaron amaroni that's cool that's cool very cool thank you yeah yeah well that's a comment in itself because um the aaron amaroni is just so difficult fact, i think it's coming back um quite close next month or two um, but basically, it's in production, and then it's off for six months, and then it's back. Um, so to compare this to uh, an Iron Amor, it's great. That is a, a really good yeah. whiskey with uh, Amaroni. Nice. Yep, I would agree with Alan on that one. Brilliant. Thank you, Alan. Yeah. Mm. Now we're on to a different, a different side of Scotland now. <laughs> so, some it's different over to the island. Yeah, so for your peat heads amongst you, um, you'll like the last two. So, number jam number seven, we have a Kalila. So, for us, when we started, 
Kalila was obviously a dream whiskey. Julian and I, we love the peated stuff. Um, absolutely love uh, Kalila, Ardbeg, all that stuff. Um, so being an independent bottler, bottling a Kalila is kind of one of those things that you need to tick off. So we're really happy to get this cask. This one, it's finished in port. So um, as opposed to Glenglass, glass, so it's fully matured in port. This is finished for 14 months in a first fill ruby port barrel. Um, so when we were bottling this, you can see from the color already, um, the, the vats of this, they basically put it into a big IBC before they bottle it. Um, this was just, it looked black. It was like black tar and we were super excited for it. So um, first fill, Ruby Port, Kalila, um, and I, we didn't want to finish for, for too long in the port because it was a very active cask. I love the taste of Kalila, so we still wanted to bring that through. I don't think the port would necessarily overpower it, but you get that saltiness. So we got, it was a lot of the barbecued meats, obviously, um, the dark chocolate, there was the plum jam from it, um, flame raisins. Uh, but the wild card for this one, for me, this is one of my wild cards for, um, for some reason, I got a little bit of lemon drizzle cake. I put it on the label and the tasting notes. You might not necessarily get it, but for some reason, there was like a little citrus note to it and my mind just went to lemon drizzle cake for some reason. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm really, really happy to have bottled the Kalila finally. Um, and again, bottled at 50% natural color, like I said. And um, that was bottled in February this year. It was released in March. Um, so obviously, Brian's got it. You guys are still, I think you guys are the first tasting to try this because this is still one of the more, one of our newest releases. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. What do you guys think? What do you think, Brian? Suit and fruit, absolutely cracking. Wow, nice. Thank you, Sammy. Suit and fruit. That would be a great name for a bottling range if you only bottle like peated whiskey and like sherry or port or marsala casks. Suit and fruit. You should do that, Sammy. That's a good idea. Hmm. The label on this one as well before i before i forget um so this obviously has a big plane flying over it so we do something called a cask share so again because we're a young company we're trying to get you know money in and getting casks and all this so this is one of our cask share ideas so we basically got the price of a bottling and we split that down into 500 pound shares and then we give people a return of the bottling when we produce it. So it um, basically helps us get a bottle on shelf for free and it's letting people come into our brand and help us and it's worked really well so far. So this year is it's called it's the one of the largest flying boats ever created and it's called the Saunders Row Princess. Um, I think it only flew a couple of times and then they basically demolished it. You won't be able to see one ever now, apart from on this label. And it's doing a low pass over the Kalila distillery. Now, because this is a cask share, we've you won't be able to see it on this, but there was 26 shares and we've got 26 windows in the plane to signify one, uh, one share for all of the investors that helped us bring this bottle into life. So that's a wee story about that. Good Kalila, cool story, cool label. Um, and the purple's nice with it as well. So I hope you all enjoy. Slange. What do you guys think? Brian, you there? Different from the Glen Glass support. Having a wee bit technical problems okay. here. So, so bear with us. So I'm running back and forward. So, <laughs> well, right. um, Simi, get that trademark. Get that trademark, mate. 
Suit and fruit. Suit and fruit. fruit. Yeah, I thought it was good. You have to rush Paul to that, but there's a race on. There's a race <laughs> on. Suit and fruit. Well suit done. And fruit. Absolutely. Um, everybody that knows me, don't like Petey with the whiskey whatsoever. Uh, occasionally, yeah, mainland Petey. Yeah, yeah, I can cope with that. Maybe the next one. I don't know. Well, you know, yeah. this one's all right, to be perfectly honest. Oh, my God, where am I now? I'm all over the place. <laughs> Keep calm and have a drink. I know. I... <laughs> Woof! I feel dizzy. <laughs> what, what's it? Uh, I, I didn't see a lot of the other comment. What were people saying? Did people like it? Is it good? Uh, Robert. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Uh, barbecue, smoked bacon, yep. yeah, or chocolate dipped in peat bra. Getting more of a Lafroy. Okay, nice, nice. I know, I know, like, obviously, peat isn't for everybody, but again, from our like, we we would we needed a peat in the range, and this is our very first peated whiskey, actually, yeah. Kalila. So and like yeah. I say, you guys are the, some of the first uh, first to try it. So that's the I first. I think the fact that you've softened it with a port finish. Yeah. And I don't think Kalila is one of these ones from Isla that's predominantly in your face with the Pete Iodine sort of TCP Lafroy yeah. um, Lagavulin kick. It's a subtle, smoky, um, more gentle style of peat and smoke. To add that to a port finish is a gentle way to get people into Isla whiskey, I think. Yeah. Being a non-Isla fan. Yeah, hope, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the port, I don't know. I, I, the, the port isn't overpowering. I think it's there, and it, it does add the sweetness. The, I think you're right with the Kalila. It's it's not like the Lagavulin and Iodine taste and stuff. Yeah. It's more coastal. I know they're all coastal. Um, I know, but, but it also gives it that, that color as well. That Tony yeah. sort of there is a color to it that's different. Yeah, like it. I mean, that's only fourteen months, and it's a. It's a it's a barrique again. So yes, sir. That, that was a really active cask. You sometimes put whiskey into casks and it doesn't do anything, and you sometimes put it in for six months and it'll turn, you know, um, turn black basically. So yeah, yeah, that one was quite active. And like Alan said, Pete and Port, yeah. So bit of a that's one of the uh, checklists. We, we like to check the clear off, so happy, happy with that. Well, this will surprise a lot of people who are watching. I like this. Mm. Nice one. Well, I do. Yeah. Nice. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a highly critic. <laughs> but everybody to their own. You know? I mean, I have a very sweet tooth. So anything that's finished in sherry, petrochem and air, pork, yep. Great. Or even just um, now turning to ones that have just been aged in bourbon casks. Wasn't a great fan of because there was no sherry to it. Yeah. But I'm now turning to bourbon ones. That's why the, um, the, the Annandale one that we had is 150th anniversary. I really liked it. So yeah, we bottled it. But yeah, I for Isla. I'm almost. I'm not going to give it a ten out of ten. I'm, I'm giving it a high eight. Nice. So you're, oh. so you're in. You're in the next round. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> to the judges' house. <laughs> you're in the judges' house. Well done. Well done. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go forward from there. Yeah. And no, I again, no water. Just that's just water. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the um, yeah, Kalila as well is again. I liken it to if you went to a distillery to buy a single cask Kalila. Like I was in, I don't know if anybody 
I watched him knows like the Ben Nevis bar in Finiston. Um, we were in there the other week. Yeah, my son used to work there when he was at college and um, university. Oh, really? That's my local. I, I love it. It's great. Um, yeah, they did say it was uh, there was a lot of rough folk there, so uh, I guess like, <laughs> that probably said so. I wouldn't last there That's, <laughs> if it was rough. I was uh, to be fair, to be fair, Paul, it was 13 years ago. So. <laughs> yeah, no, <there's, laughs> Unless you got in the back door, you know. <laughs> there still is a couple, not going to lie, but um, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's it. The, we had a Kalila, it was one of the distillery releases, it was 14-year-old um, distillery release and 46%, but it was really expensive for a dram. And I looked at ours and I was like, we're doing a single cask pour. 12 year old on shelf for 89 quid and i'm like if you kind of compare those two worlds then you know it's something a bit special as well so mm -hmm. yeah I, yeah really happy with that one again but martin likes it as well it's good lovely unique tasting ground no i think I mean, that, i think that's really nice i have to say nice that's another barrique I've just realised we use a lot of bariques. Ah, I know. I was just going yeah. to say that. It's, it's the barrique the way to go then. To give it that more depth of flavour and just enhance it because it's a smaller cast. I I, I'd like to say that I've thought about it that much. But it's just luck, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's just going to happen. <laughs> no, like, you oh, spent God. five years investigating <laughs> the science of casks to yeah. get to the ultimate ratio of flavour to depth. Yes. Maturation. Yes, I want. Actually, that brings me on to. I don't know. Has any have you ever heard of Birkin Tree? Do you know Birkin Tree? So Birkin Tree. Long story short, it's an estate that's up north. They're using tree sap from birch to basically mix with whiskey, and you know they're trying to monetize an estate. Um, and it's it's really nice. It comes straight out of the tree. It's not for everybody. Um. However, I, I went to one of their like opening nights and um, one of their advertising kind of things. And I was sat next to one of the girls that works for Edinburgh Uni and she does a lot of work with, um, what, what's a Edinburgh distillery? There's one up there, it's not Port Leith. It's one of the other ones, but she investigates a lot of how whiskey gets its flavor. And she said, the actual quality of the spirit doesn't matter that much. It's the quality of the wood that has a really big impact. Now, you would think, well, duh, because that's where whiskey gets its flavor. But she said it's like 80% of the quality of whiskey that people generally enjoy is to do with the wood. So that's why we've tried really hard to get really high quality wood to finish the whiskey in or to mature in. So I think it makes a lot more of a difference than people think. So... No, I think you're right on. I think you're right on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could put a really good spirit. I mean, a really good cracking spirit into a duff cask. Yeah. Not a duff cask, but a cask that is not at its full potential. Yeah. And you you will not get the benefit of that absolute perfect unique spirit, which the distiller has spent years on to get that spirit to his ideal optimum to put it into a cask. 100%. Because what you're going to get out of that is just not the full potential of that spirit. Yeah, yeah. And vice versa, you could have yeah. rubbish spirit, but you could put it in a really good cask. Yep, and, and that cask really will good. just enhance it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's good to know. That kind of... That that helps because we try really hard to get good wood, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh well, I like that one. Mm. There we go. That's in my ice cream parlor. That one. Yeah. That's, well, on the That's on the display. I was wondering what, could, what ice cream could go with that. You get some salted caramel, maybe. A little bit nice. of saltiness with the peat and the port could go nice. With a smoky bacon sandwich. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Smoky yeah. bacon butty bear. Yeah. 
Maybe there's a market for that. <coughs> we've got loads of ideas. We've got suit and fruit. We've got an uh, alcoholic <coughs> ice cream brand. Aye. Aye. This is great. <laughs> I'm glad nobody's really watching this and recording it or it's on um, anything you can see because it's only us that came up with this idea, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like I, have you... to say, I, I really, really did enjoy that one. Nice one. Oh, thank you. Yes, aye. Great. Yeah. So, the last one of the evening. That's gone too fast. Hey, um, uh, that's good. No, no, I'm having a good time. That's that's why I don't want to end. We've got mm. so the last one. Um, I need to open a bottle of it because I haven't actually got one open. Oof. So, um, this one here is um, any more Glen Goyne casks in the pipeline? Uh, maybe that's all I'm saying. Maybe Glen Goyne casks are hard to get and generally they're classed as unnamed space side um so maybe um and well, for me no. can i just say we've still got some on the shelf oh do you well yeah we do yeah. indeed because that um yeah that that is glen going the train yeah. one that, that's Glen Goyne. That's finished. right. We've still got yeah. them. We've still got it. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Highly recommend we going. Yeah, we don't have that many of them left. But now you brought the subject up about Glen Goyne. Um, yep, yeah, I think we've got four or five bottles now of the the, uh, the Glen Goyne. So, yeah. I, whoever, who was asking? Andy. Andy, yep. Yeah. Um, if you want to buy the four or five bottles, Andy, yep, yeah, you've got them. Do it. Yeah, I'll deliver them free of charge. Well, will they? Will <laughs> will they? will deliver them. <laughs> it's not who you know. Well, it is actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just you get what you know. It's who you know. So, or what will you know? Oh, that's bad, you know. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> will they? will deliver your your Glen Goyne if you order it, Andy. And there, it's on camera now. You said free of charge, so. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> the whiskey. The whiskey, no, the delivery is. Yeah, the delivery, not the whiskey. Yeah. Let's <laughs> um, clarify that point. For everyone else, that was one of our other releases. It was a single cask Glen Goyne. Aye. Absolutely belter. Absolute yeah. belter. But finished in Pedro Jimenez Sherry yep. Quarter cask for eight months it was yep. it's super carried. So would yep. highly recommend going and getting that from from Brian. So, but shall we go on to the number eight? Oh, yes. Yep. So, number eight. So, this one, uh, again, another Glen Glasso. I know I said earlier, um, it's hard to get single cast Glen Glasso, and it is. So, when we got the Glen Glasso port, we also had the chance to get this. So, we obviously, we jumped at it. So, this is a single cask, peated Glen Glasso. Fully matured for 13 years in Pedro Jimenez Sherry. So you see the color of that natural color, 50%. Um, this was my second Christmas dram. Um, I absolutely, I absolutely loved it. So um, yeah, I'm sure everybody's already uh, cracked into it. So I'll uh, I'll pull myself we dram and I'll go through the taste notes and then a little bit about the story. So for us, obviously, it's a PT, uh, PT Sherry Bomb, um, and a bit like how someone said that uh, other distilleries are on our watch list. Um, sorry, somebody's just asked a question. Um, other distilleries are, um, oh, we've got a couple. Obviously, I would love to bottle stuff like Springbank, but they are four hundred thousand pounds a cask and completely out of reach. Um, Something like a, a Belveni was really one of ours, so I'm happy that we got the Burnside. Um, I would love to do a nameable Glen Goyne. I'd also love to do a lot of new distilleries, so I love Loch Lee. One day I want to do a Loch Lee uh, release. That'd be really cool. Um, and possibly some casks from different countries. I would love to do Japanese single cask stuff. Um, and uh, I would also love to do a blended release, so where we blend stuff and release that to people so um yeah we've got a couple of things in the pipeline as well that are interesting but anyway back to this so 
Um, where was I? Yeah, we'll go through the tasting notes. So we got a lot of sticky toffee pudding. It was orange, dark honey. One of the nosing uh, noses that I got from it was almost espresso. So when you when you kind of go into a cafe and you um, hear the coffee machine and you get that like deep espresso smell, um, I got that from it. There's also a lot of dark chocolate and obviously barbecue smoke. But um, mm-hmm. I would say for this one, when you try it, it's kind of like if you think of it, the smoke's at the center and then it kind of opens up into a nice sweetness. It's not overly smoky. It's not like the island peat. It's it's Highland peat, so it's kind of uh, kind of subtle. Um, but yeah, we didn't do anything to this. We just basically sourced the cask and we brought it to you guys. So really happy with this one. Um, so Slange, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Well, I've come in a dilemma here. You've got heated whiskey and you've got my desert island wine, Pedro Jimenez sherry. <laughs> now, PX sherry, you love it or you hate it, can eat it, which means that when you open a bottle, I have to drink it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> have you ever tried PX sherry? Yes, I have for the first yeah, what time. Do you, what, what do you think? So I like PX sherry. I like Oloroso sherry better yeah. though. For some reason, I don't know why. I like the dryness of it. Yes, because I've got an extremely sweet too. Yeah, but PX, I totally understand why whiskey and PX work together. If you've got a sweet tooth, it's great. If you've got a sweet tooth and you like smoky style whiskey and you put the two together and and they balance each other, you get something like this. Yeah. Smokiness, not I the iodine, but you've got the sweetness of the the PX sherry um, to it. Yeah, it works. Absolutely, it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it worked a wee oh, bit too as well. Yeah, because I've got I've got a little story about this one. It's not the label. I will go through that. But do you remember earlier where we talked about leakage and I said that I've got yep something earlier to talk about so this cask we bought it along with the glen glass of port so they were both delivered to our bottling plant at the same time and they were both bottled around the same time this is bottled in uh september last year and it it was released a couple months later so we bottled the port cask first and it came up and we had really good numbers and we're like this is excellent we bottled this second. We were meant to get 340 bottles out of this cask, but we only have 104. So there was only 104 bottles. Oof. That wasn't because we've decided to keep the liquid somewhere else. It was because it was, there was liquid. enough liquid in it. So we thought, oh. yeah, we thought um, it was leaking. We were like, okay, so the cask leaked. So we had an investigation done to it. And like you said, water in it, shaked it, see whatever came out. The cask was airtight. It was great. Nothing was leaking. So what we think has happened is for the past 13 years, somebody's been stealing this and putting it in a little bottle Ooh. and keeping it for themselves. So it means, it means that we've bought this cask bottled it we we're meant to get 340 bottles we only got 104 and um, there's no refund there's no insurance for something like that so this bottling is a complete loss for us complete Oof. loss so we lose money when we're selling this um so yeah but it's still really really good i don't oh, blame good the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah i don't blame the person for stealing it but i am annoyed <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the story about that one. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a better pill to swallow, but the whiskey usually oh, gets. It is, yeah. Yeah. Well, on the same story, we had a, a cask of whiskey, what name the distillery, and we asked to, after about 14, 15 years, we asked them to regauge it. 
and they came back going, oh, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. Um, it's not what we expected. Yeah. Um, so what we have to do is um, we will buy that cask back from you and we will give you the sister cask that's sitting one number up, which has got the uh, amount of alcohol in it that it should have. That's good. You know what? That I hand up to that distillery. Whoever did they that. said, look, we've regaged yeah. it and it's basically half of what you should have. Yeah. We have a problem, but we'll put a hand up and say, what we'll do is we'll regauge the next cast next to it. Um, that is what we should have. So we'll buy that one back from you and sell you that one back. So you've actually got more liquid for the same price um, because of it. So that was very good of them to do that. That was That's really good. Because... Yes, so I, I have to say, hands up to that distillery. For the, I won't mention it, but well done that distillery yeah. um, for doing that. It was, I mean, it, was, it, was, it was good, very, very good PR that um, they did that. It's only yeah. between us and the distillery. You, you know, I mean, for like... For, for people that are tuning in as well, it's, it's, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And there's millions of casks out there. So you'd probably be, I think people would probably be surprised at how much it does happen. But when you're buying these casks, there's no insurance on the liquid. You insure the cask, yeah, but yep. there's no insurance for loss of liquid. And you're really at the mercy of people and mm -hmm. how much you trust them. So... I mean, when we came into the industry, we we have no contacts. We don't know anyone in the industry. We don't have a foot in the door or anything. So people kind of looked at us and kind of took us as the mug a wee bit. Um, thankfully, you know, by the time that we bottled this, we learned a few things. Um, but they didn't give us a they didn't give us a refund. Um, we got a partial refund, but we did we definitely didn't get what you got from from the distillery. That's really good yeah. often. Really good of them. So, no. yeah. but I mean, it makes this liquid sweeter to me. It means that again, find another one, find another peated single cask in Glasgow with that story, fully matured in PX. You won't. Yeah. Yep. So, um, this one's now obviously completely sold out for us. So, um, you guys have still got bottles. So, if you want some, go to Brian, get it, um, and you'll have a great dram. And you, you probably won't find another. Sticky. Well, I normally sort of brace myself for the end of our whiskey tasting because of the peat issue. I think this is the first tasting that I've done that the peated whiskies have been far superior to what I expected them to be. Nice. Oh, no, I absolutely. And I think everybody who knows me will be going, what? Yeah, nice. yeah, 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 aye. I'm not going to be a peat, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be a peat freak, by the way. Yeah. But something that's finished in a sherry or a port cask that's from Isla or yeah. whatever, um, it softens the blow a bit. Yeah, definitely. But it's, it's like, as I say, it's like everything else. And some people like sweet wine, some people like really dry wine or full-bodied red wines or fruity red wine. Give me a whiskey. You know, you like them peated, slightly peated, more sherry or whatever. And I mean, people come into the shop, well, oh, I haven't drunk whiskey for 30 years because I had a bad experience. Because yeah. you were absolutely hammered when you were young. <laughs> yeah. And your dad gave you, I won't mention a brand, but he gave you eight whiskey glasses full of it that made yeah. you throw up when you were 16 or 15. Yeah. You never drunk whiskey again. You think whiskey all tastes the same? Yeah. Until we do a whiskey taster. Yes, exactly. And then you, then you have eight whiskies like tonight, and you go, you know what? Whiskey is not whiskey. What? It's not whiskey. It's not whiskey. It's yeah. all different. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. That's the whole point of being it's um, actually different. My uh, my my old man, he he detests whiskey, or detested. And so I, I'm the only one in my family that actually like whiskies. 
and or, and he uh, uh, eight great tramps tonight. All for the thank you very much. It's one in seven. So Altmore and Kalila, nice. Um, so yeah, all my, my dad didn't didn't like whiskey, and nobody in my family did. And he his story exact same as what you've just described. He had a whiskey when he was younger, got way too drunk on it. He thought all whiskey was the same, didn't like it until we started Glashu. And now he's asking for whiskey left, right, and center. He's like, Oh, what's this new one that you've got? I'm like, Oh, same Paul. What's this new one that you've got? We just we'll get you this. And now he really likes whiskey. So I'm like, excellent. I've converted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and I think there's a new generation of people coming up. Mm -hmm. who are um, thinking whiskey's not whiskey. They now realise that whiskey is a different taste and style and flavour. Um, not just your normal blended whiskey. I won't advertise the blends, but the major blends of whiskey. And um, people will go, oh, I don't like them. Or I do like them, but yeah. I don't want to spend 20 or 30, 40 pounds on something. I don't know. It's just the whole point of whiskey tasting. Yeah, you get to taste it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let, let people um, try it and yeah. see the diversity of styles. And now that whiskey's, I mean, when I first started 42 years ago and working in the shop, there was only a, a single distillery whiskeys. And then I think, think, and I might be wrong, but I'll put an echo in there. Ben Morangy were the first ones, and I can remember they had a plinth, and it was the port finish, the sherry finish, the the blood, Madeira finish, whatever, yep. and there was a plinth of whiskies. Um, oh, oh, this is so different. Can I, can I pause you right there? Because yeah. I have some of those bottles right, right there. Have you? Yes. Oh, give, give me two. Well, you must be going back a few years, Paul. Well, I think so. There is. Uh, is it this? It was like the. Yep, that's him. That's the yeah. one. Yeah, them. Let me, that... Can you see me? Can you see it again? Well, that's uh. Yep. I've got, I've got like the port ones down there, but that's cold. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. And they, and I can remember, um, uh, say they give us a plinth with, uh, with a wooden plinth and a wee barrel, and each one said sherry, port, Madeira, etc. I think they might have been one of the first ones, uh, but I think um, Springbank did many years before that do a finish of um, a style of whiskey that was a one all but many years ago, they did when Monji did it. Yeah. And I remember I went to the house house at the time, and I go, oh, we must have, he was a malt whiskey drinker. Uh, and he said, oh, well, I didn't really like that whiskey. I said, oh, it's just a new one. It's a sherry finish. And he goes, what's a sherry thing? <laughs> well, because this was new, it was totally new. I said, well, it's been, it, it, or a sherry cask, it's a, it's Glen Morangy, but Glen Morangy is Glen Morangy. Oh, this is a cherry thing. Well, we, we, we drunk that bottle that night. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's why you Absolutely a different eye opener. And then we've got what you've just done tonight. You've got all the other things, the Madeira octaves, etc. The, the whole thing's expanded in the industry. Yeah. yeah. And talking of which, I think maybe once we've finished, you can come back on. And we'll talk about window displays and folks, if that's okay with you. Yeah, definitely, definitely, absolutely. Let's right. do it. Yeah. Well, folks, um, thank you very much for uh, attending this evening's online tasting. Again, Paul, thank you for your time. Um, thank you for having really me. really great for the information that you gave us. Um, you're coming to them free next week? Yes, I will be. I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be good. I think the two, the, is it just the, the, are the two of these coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. James and Holiday. Are you staying overnight or are you just going back up the road? Or? I, th I, I need to be back up in uh, Glasgow because we're going to Edinburgh early on Saturday. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, 
Aye, unfortunately, but we'll. Well, okay. I was going to say you might be able to visit the hole in the wand the place because that's where everybody goes. But... Well, I'm sure. no, we can. Oh, still... you've missed. You've missed it. You've missed it. We can still go after. I'm sure one of us will have a have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both of you might not get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. It's been really great. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed your drums. What we're going to do now is to draw um, for the raffle. So, See, but, quickly, sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Could I no, tell the story of the label yeah. for that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really quickly, that label, is. this is called the Benny Railplane, and it was a real prototype built outside Mongai, and essentially it was meant to be... Uh, a monorail that went over existing rail uh, plane tracks. So see there, you can see railway tracks. This was meant to be built over. It was essentially a plane fuselage um, that had a propeller at the front and back, and it was meant to go high speed along railway lines. But it oh. never got built. So to me, this bottling is a bit of a... It was doomed to fail from the beginning because it's 13 years old, unlucky number, this is a project, an engineering project that never worked. It was also doomed to fail. And the cask is a complete loss for us. So the full bottling was doomed to fail. <laughs> right. It was oh, never doomed. It was never gonna work, but we bottled it and it got there. So anyway, that's the spiel for that. It should be called glass of 13 year old. We're doomed. We're all doomed. <laughs> We're all doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Barry, back to the job. My bad. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Um so yeah okay well just do the draw ball and then we'll go back to you later if that's okay no worries right. um so as mentioned before we have um the raffle prize of the blair raffle the first the first release um whilst we've had people purchasing the tasting kits um we haven't that many people purchasing raffle tickets a bit of a disappointment but um so therefore we only have three raffle prizes but the raffle prize is the blair raffle um rum cask at 67 pound a bottle but three of them left we've laid three of them aside so Karen, do your worst. What are you doing? Five nine five. I like that then. Five nine five. Next one. Yep. Oh, this is random. Don't shout. Five nine four. Let's see where it goes. Karen doesn't know what to pull the next one out, but they were well shoveled. Five four four. So we only had three bottles because of the price, but what we've decided to do is the last one. We are going to give the person a free um, tasting. Now that may be an online tasting, or it may be a live tasting. At the railway club in the place. So here we go. So for a free tasting, next one, which I think is Claxton's in June, we have six one two. So well done, whoever has got that. So 
Thank you very much for um, coming along. Thank you for enjoying the evening. Um, eight different whiskies, fantastic rams. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the evening. It's been a wee bit quicker than normal because we haven't had a break. Um, give us your feedback on that. Would you prefer it this way or would you prefer a break? Um, but next tasting, June, keep your diaries free. August, keep your diaries free. And a wee trip from BT Arendale or Glad Nook in between. That would be great. And we're trying to do a chocolate tasting and a food tasting. All something different just to keep people occupied and have a good night out. So, on behalf of Cameron, myself, and all the staff at TV Watsons, and it's just do come into the shop. We are so, so pleased about the shop. It's totally different. We've all worked extremely hard over the five weeks. We think over the five weeks we've been closed, but we've been sitting doing nothing. Oh, my goodness gracious me. I've got pits, pits of me I never realised I had, to be honest. It's been great. 12-hour chefs, great. It's worthwhile and fantastic. So, thank you for your support again for everybody. On behalf of myself, Karen, and everybody at TV Watson's, thank you for joining us this evening.